Screen face. Hello, everybody. Good evening. We are here for our weekly Wind Down Wednesday. What's up? I'm just pulling you guys up on my phone so I can check the comments. Okay. Felix is watching. Yay. Yeah, I'm watching. We have one. All right. Here. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Amelia Fortes, and I'm a self-love coach and teacher. And if this is your first time here, uh, Felix and I have been here every Wednesday night for the last, I don't know, the last 97 months of, of March 2020. <laughs> it's about like, yeah, it's about like forever. The last 97 months of March 2020, and um, we've just been talking about different topics. And tonight, we are continuing the topic from last week, which is how do you attract love? But we're going to dive deeper into it more specifically, talking about commitments and priorities. Mm. Are you committed? If you say you want to attract love, are you actually committed to attracting love? And, or, and, have you made it a priority? So Felix, kick us off. <laughs> well, you want me to say? Um... <laughs> How? Okay, so kick us off with what? <laughs> exactly. With commitment, like what? Okay, I'll kick us off. What commitment um, looks like? Um, well, because we were talking about it this morning, like we should talk about commitments and priorities. Oh, I'll kick it off actually. <laughs> yeah. I got it. So today I had a really long day, a really long emotional day that started at 6 a.m. and it's 9 p.m. right now. Mm. Um, and yeah, it, it was a tough day today. Today was a tough day. And I called Felix this morning to tell him that. And he was all like, um, hey, Emily. He was all like, are you, do you still want to do tonight's live? And I was like, hell yeah, I'm a committed bitch, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and we were like, cool. And when I said that, I was like, yeah, like, let's talk about commitment because I feel like it's something that need like if you're looking to attract love, it's something that you need to commit to and it's something that you need to make a priority. Now, when I hear the word commitment, I immediately think of like restriction and I immediately think of it being hard. Um, and this is Wait, just my filter. You personally, okay. I personally think, okay. like when I hear the word commitment and when I think about myself and the collective like society I feel like especially with dating and especially with singles I feel like there's this concept or like thinking that it's hard or that mm -hmm. it um or that the, basically that there's an apprehension or a resistance to committing right because anytime people are like saying oh I have this idea I have this idea I have this idea and I'll be like, oh, when are you going to do it? It's like there's that immediate kind of like constriction. Yeah. Um, or like if I hear people who are single and they're dating and they're chatting about like, oh, yeah, I'm talking to this girl or I'm talking to this guy. And then it's like, oh, so what does it mean? Like, are y'all dating? Are y'all seeing each other? Like, are y'all official? Whatever, you know. And like, I feel like generally speaking, there's like this flinch back. Um in myself and in other people of just like 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 that's too that's too real that's too raw you know um so I think that's a general knee-jerk reaction regardless of how we've trained ourselves out of that because like for me you know I've done a lot of personal development work and so I've reframed commitment to be something that it's like okay no I I get to choose something that I really care about and something that really matters to me because I matter and because what I want matters and because I'm enough to get what I want, right? Mm -hmm. However, there's still that like knee jerk, like reaction of like, like, why are you asking me that question? Like, that's too real. I don't know. What do you, what do you sense with that? I, I, so I think it's, I mean, it's, it's such a large conversation talking about commitment. Um, and yeah, like it, we tend to see it as like, okay, now that I said that, now I have to do it. 
right? And whenever there's a have to, that there's there's a there's an attachment. There's something now you have to do it, where like you can be committed, right? So, so sometimes we choose things from a just because we we don't even know why we haven't even like really dug deep to to go into ourselves and even ask the question why am i even committed commit committing to this right why am i like a lot of people are committed and as a result you know they're receiving verbal abuse physical abuse different types of abuses where that's that's not really committing you're you're enabling right like yeah. it's 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 um you can actually Commit, commitment isn't a, a, it's not supposed to tie you. Um, you can be committed to something and realize that that's not what you want and then gracefully commit to yourself or commit to being graceful or commit to have grace with yourself, right? You can mess up and then commit to, right? Like it doesn't, it, it's never, it's, it, it's not a fixed point. Right, so yeah. it could and it could look many different ways. Um, so, it, like what I'm hearing you say is that it's like um, it's like kind of the other side of that, right? So, because what I was speaking to is like that flinch back is like the before you actually commit. So it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to do that. And so what I'm hearing is like you're talking about like the other side of it. So it's like because if I do commit, then I'm basically like shackled to this thing to the point where. I even right. have to endure abuse or endure um, being unhappy. Yeah, and and, and realize that I can make a different choice. Um, hey, everybody, for joining. Just a reminder: Wind Down Wednesday, we're talking about commitment and priorities um, as it relates to attracting love. And if you're here, drop us a comment so we can say hello and so that we know you're here. Um, so yeah, both um, sides. Of yeah, like so. So you know, I I'm gonna I'm gonna. So I think it's important to take time to to search within you. Like, okay, I asked myself this question today, and like it, things are going pretty well, right? So I asked myself this question: Do I? And and it, it prompted it. It was prompted because I saw someone like that wanted to open up their own gym, and I asked myself. Do I want to open up my own gym? And but I didn't like I didn't I wasn't like now I got to open up my own gym. I like okay I asked the question and I kind of let it go and then I'm seeing like wherever if if the question comes up again I'm actually looking to be with it. I I um I enrolled to a twelve month mentorship. I didn't I didn't it's a twelve month mentorship. It's it it was a little scary. So the opportunity was there. And then I decided I took 24 hours. I decided if I am I if, if I'm gonna commit to this, I'm gonna commit to be led, right? Because that's what if I'm going into a coaching program, a mentorship program. I'm going to commit to being wrong because this is something I I need, right? In order to level up. So um there are just many different avenues in which you can commit. And you can also realize that you've been committing to that you no longer want to commit, right? Like, yeah. I love so, how you said I commit to being led because it's like, to me, like relating everything that we're saying to the topic of like, how do you attract love? I think a lot of singles and, you know, like myself included, like I think, when people are looking, are single and looking for love and would be the ones who would even watch this video, mm -hmm. they're saying, okay, yeah, I'm committed to finding love and I'm making it a priority. But the truth is they're committed to control. And it's like, I want to control this situation and how this relationship goes. And, oh my gosh, I just met somebody really cute and I like them. And so now I'm going to try to control who I am so that they like me too. And I'm gonna to try to control when we become Facebook official and, and, and we're no longer being led by the process. We're no longer being led by our curiosity. I think you touched on that a bit. You didn't say it like that, but how yeah. 
you know, you saw someone else wanted to start their own gym and you allowed yourself to be curious, do I want that? And you allowed yourself to kind of be with it, right? And so bringing that to the context of like what I'm saying with relationships, it's like you could meet someone new and you can be, and you can be attracted to them and be curious of like, I'm curious if to see if this could turn into something because I'm interested, right? right. Um, and you you wouldn't have been curious about the, the opening your own gym if you weren't somewhat interested, right? So first you need to be like a little bit interested or a lot interested. And then you can like actually be like curious because then that will have you increase. Because like here, that's the thing. There's like levels to commitment, right? Yes. So first you're like, the lowest level is you're not even interested, right? So if There's you're not levels even to everything, I believe. Yeah, There's so if you're not everything. even interested, you're you're just, you're like, I'm not interested in dating. So even if you meet someone cute or whatever, maybe you're only yeah. interested in hooking up, but you're just like, so you're gonna, you're gonna occur or like show up a certain way when you're not even interested. But then you have like curiosity, right? Which is where you got, got to of like, all right, I'm kind of curious now. And then a little bit above that is like, Okay, now I'm interested, right? And then we go up the ranks and then you have um, involved where you're back and forth. And then you have engaged where you're like truly engaging in the commitment and in the context of relationships, you actually get engaged. Um, and then you have ownership. And with relationships, it's not like, oh, I own you, but it's like you're taking ownership of yourself and the relationship and it's really something that you're committing to for the long haul or for however long you choose to commit to it so there's different levels to it and I think as it relates to dating it's important for people to realize where they're at but also be okay with it which tags back to what you said earlier of because you can you can get all the way up to engaged and then you can still change your mind and I think yeah. All the especially time. when people get engaged and then especially when people get married they just stay in I mean that's a whole other topic but like to I, I really like what you said about the other side of that where I think we're afraid to commit and we have that flinch reaction because we're probably preempting that we're gonna be stuck in the situation and that we won't have the option to change our minds or to make a different choice so that's a lot. That's a lot to unpack. <laughs> well, I think just at the core, the commitment is about you and who you are and who you get to be. You get to be someone who's committed. Listen, it would it at some like you we have to we have to understand like if you decided to not come into this live because you had something going on or like <laughs> then you would be committed to something else, right? It, the question is, what are you committed to, right? And if you're always you committed feel, to something is what I'm and, and if you feel like you have the stamina to be here, then great. But the thing is, if your mental health is, in the, is being affected, it, it, if you are being like, it's, it, there's always, uh, and this is why priorities are so important, right? Because priorities tie with commitment. So, you know, what are your, a lot of people are like, I don't have time to date right now. What? I don't have time to work out. I don't, but so, so now we get to look at, well, what are you prioritizing? Cause usually that's what it is. You're, you're prioritizing whatever is most important. Even if you don't, if, even if, if we were to make an assessment and we would take like, just be still, you probably wouldn't even put that at, at the top rank of importance. Right now, there's something that's taking importance over your health, over your love life, over the way you connect with your friends and family. So that also shows where what you're committed to. And for a lot of us, it's 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 just been it's social norms and things that have been pro pre-programmed that we're just running on automatic. So it's not even our fault. It's just things that are we we are a lot of us are moving through the world like things are happening when in fact, we're actually creating our experience our, as we go. We're recreating our lives as we go. Um, and like, and you don't even have to, you don't have to believe that at all, right? So 
I live a different life because I, I believe in this. So I'm not even, I'm just saying like, um, you get to look at what you're prioritizing and if you wanna continue, because human beings are really good at like predicting shit. Like we're really good at predicting stuff. And- um, What do you mean so by that? What I mean by that is that if, if I were to ask you, where do you see yourself in five years from now? A lot of people, if they stop and then they see what's been happening in their lives, they can actually see what can happen in five years if they took the time to actually like be with it. And a lot of us don't like what we see. That's what I'm saying. Actually, that's a really great point because one of one of the things that I sometimes do with my clients is like, especially if they're like, I have these big long-term goals that I want to accomplish. I usually have them, you know, kind of reverse engineer that and just look back, like, cause you said five years. So let's just take five years. So today is uh, May 13th, 2020. So five years ago was May 13th, 2015. So what I would say is, okay. So write the date, May 13th, 2015. And just kind of like think about where you were at in your life, you know, and compare that to where you're at right now. And oftentimes there's always going to be, you know, and if you're watching this, like, just think about it for a second, like May 15th, 2015, how old were you? What was your life like? What were you doing? What was your job? Who were your friends? What, where did you live? Blah, blah, blah. Just really like generally think about your life and then compare that to where you are today. And oftentimes people are like, holy crap, right? Because I'm like, it's did you crazy. change a lot? Yeah, I'm like, did you change crazy. a lot or did you change a little? And they're like, a lot. And then a I'm million. like, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, now how much of that was intentional and how much of that was on purpose? And how much of that did you really like map out? And oftentimes they're like, well, not really. I just kind of like, this is just where I ended up. And so I'm yeah. like, yeah, if you can change that much just by Ooh. Ooh. just where you ended up, Yes. What's possible when you actually work towards something with intentionality Ooh. and with commitment Hit and with okay. priority? Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> so let, I, I want to I wanna bring this up because I think this is a perfect example. And I'm going to ask, I'm just going to ask a simple question, but Shamik, Shamik yeah. said this. Shamik said this. Let me read Jeremy, it out loud. Jeremy's in the building. Delandis, let, Vanessa, Emily. I said hi so, to Emily already. So Hi, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, this guy recently reached out to me, showed interest. We talked back and forth a bit the first day. Then he stops responding. So I asked, did I lose you? He responded, no, no, but doesn't directly answer my question around his availability. So frustrating. So the question for me, for, for you is, are you committed to being frustrated? And what, why are you pretending to not understand what's actually happening? Like, no, like frustration is a boundary. Like whenever you're frustrated, it's about you. And you have to, you have to get real clear on what it is that you're doing that has you coming back into that frustration because ultimately it's you. Like there's no one else putting you in that, in that seat. Also, especially in the beginning when people show you who they are, believe them. <laughs> trust. So, um, trust. but also that, that kind of ties back to, he said, what's happening. That kind of ties back to um, deception number five, which I don't know if you've watched that one yet, but deception number five is, is where we do checklists over values, right? And this is actually yeah. one of my favorite um, examples to use when I'm teaching clients about checklists versus values. And because for me, I'm a Virgo rising, okay? Like we like, like in Virgos, we like stuff done the way it's done and we like it color coded and we like it on time and punctual. And if you don't fall in line, then you're, you're wrong. You know, that's kind of like the energy. Well, that's, some of that's a little bit shadowy Virgo energy, but for illustrative purposes, you know, so for me, my time is my currency. And the minute that I committed to choosing based on the values of respecting time, especially mine. Because here's the thing, if someone doesn't respect your time, they don't respect theirs, right? Ooh, yes. 
And there could be a yeah. whole host of reasons why that is. And even for me, when, and that's just one value. Now, when I work with my clients, we go through like lists a whole list of values and we tweak them and we refine them. And this is why, you know, it's one deception, but I've been working with clients for months on this deception because it's, it's a whole paradigm cellular shift, but talking about time, that one value based choosing alone, where I will choose to date people who respect my time and theirs by showing up on time, by communicating like whether they'll be on time or not. And by being just okay. open and honest about it, yep. that was a game changer for dating across the board. Do you know how many bozos yeah. I knocked I off the list the minute that one value? So if I like, don't... again, back to the, the picture of five years ago to now, imagine if you start dating from this moment from like true values-based choosing, it changes the whole game, but, you know? And my so... last relationship was like one of the best relationships I've ever had in my entire life. And the very first thing that he showed me was valued time and my time and was always punctual and always did what he said he was going to do. And still to this day, always does what he says he's going to do. That's so who he me, is. Even that kind of energy, and I don't know this guy, and I don't know, yeah, see, Shamik's a Virgo rising too, right? So Shamik, like, take that Virgo rising energy and be like, boom, boom, boom. This is what's acceptable. This is what's not. If that you can't show up, then I won't put up. You know, so, so, so I said it before, like, yo, when you wrap yourself around and when you're frustrated about one person, I want you to realize that you're getting frustrated over one person. Like there's billions, there's an abundance of people. And here's the thing, right? Committing to dating isn't committing to someone you're dating. Like, like if you're committing to the process of dating, don't get, it's just, we're, you're getting to know someone. Now, if you like them, great. If you wanna just see that person, great. That's really up to you. You get to decide the criteria with which you date, but commit to dating. Don't commit to, like, it's not, an, you're, not be, you're not engaged. You can be, com and that's the thing, like you can direct commitment at so many different things, right? So that's where it gets, it becomes like a little hazy because you can commit to, you can commit to yourself. You're like, oh, I'm committed to myself, so I'm not accepting that, right? Like you can commit your time, you can commit your energy, you can commit your, so just be clear that commit to the process of dating. Don't necessarily com commit and attach yourself to the other person. Be clear and honor what you want and ask for what you need from a relationship because listen if someone isn't willing to to match you okay bye <laughs> move on because you don't want to be with someone who doesn't want to do what you what like like you don't want to trap like it, you don't need to do that it's it's what? you don't, so we don't i shouldn't try to trap men with a baby <laughs> you don't uh, you don't need to control the situation. All you need to be is you. You don't need to control anything. And if you're look and if you're like looking to control and like box in, you want to really check in because ultimately yeah. that's that someone is. It's this is just you got to learn how to play this game. Like this is just how energy works. If you try to control something, no one likes being controlled. And even, even energetically, right? Like, cause so even if you don't say like, I'm trying to control this, that's yeah. like kind of back to what we were saying before. Like a lot of singles are committed to control, but you can actually commit to having fun, right? So that was the other piece game changer for me. Like I commit to having fun while dating and look, Virgo rising, control freak, perfectionist, like all my stuff comes up because dating brings all of our stuff up. Ooh. It just does. And I'm okay with admitting that because that's just what it does. Dating, relationships, marriage, commitment, whatever. It brings all of our stuff up. Family, so, everything. Yeah, so all my control stuff comes up, but I have to keep, like, I love how Felix was saying it, like, keep checking in with myself of, like, am I being a control freak right now? Am I, And but well, especially in the beginning, like, am I not having fun? Because I'm committed to having fun. I'm not committed to, like, control. This is, but this is something I do every day and I'm single. Imagine if I was to be with everyone and I, and I was, like, hitting their guts, I'd be like, yo, maybe I have to check myself. Maybe I was wrong. Like, like you, if once you stop self-assessing and giving yourself feedback, 
then you're really just like, oh, this is who I am. Like, this is not, fuck that shit. No one's going to accept that shit. No one's going to accept, like, this is who you are. Like, no, you better grow up that shit. No one's yeah. going to, like, you know what I'm saying? So, Jeremy's um, asking, um, why do we get caught up on one person sometimes? So, that's a good I don't question. know, Jeremy, why do we get caught up on some, one person sometimes? But I think Felix is speaking to that, and it's really an abundance scarcity mentality. And you also said it earlier of like, commit to the commit to dating commit to the journey commit to the fun commit to the experience not the person because the person is a moving target right this like, is, so so this is why we get caught up we like so we're going to the, the distinction number five what is it the the, uh, the thing number five values. checklist so the person checks the checklist and then what happens is it's like oh my god this person's amazing i want to be with this person and now you've put the relationship you want based on someone, a person who is flawed and that you're only seeing like the iceberg, you're only seeing the, the, the top. And then you're like, oh my God. And then this person shows you who they really are. And you're like, oh. But I'm gonna still see the checklist and I'm gonna still commit to yeah, the checklist. Yeah, but he's still checking the checklist. And, and so then I'm gonna get ignore so... myself, right? Yeah, so you, you, you're actually, what's happening is that you're actually not checking in with what you actually want and what you need. And you're so wrapped up in wanting a relationship so bad that you're not really focusing on what it is that makes you feel good and honoring your feeling and being honest with yourself and being honest. When you're honest with yourself, it makes it easier to be honest with someone else, right? So it's, it's, all, it's all inner work. It's mm. all inner work. You want it to work all out, inner- right? So you want it to work out because you don't want another failed relationship. You want to wake work out because you don't want to look like this. You don't want to look like that. And now he's met your family. And now what are they going to say? And like, and like none of that shit matters because ultimately is what makes you happy. What honors your feeling, what makes you feel safe, what makes you feel wanted, what makes you feel sexy. You don't think about that. Right. So get clear on what it is that you need in a relationship, because again, like I said it before, when you start recognizing who people are, because people will show you exactly who they are, be like, oh, that's not it. And then move on, move fast. But this takes, this is not, this is not something that you're going to get from a live on Facebook. This is something that you're going to start getting when you start doing work on value, on your own value, on your identities, on what you're not willing to accept. Amelia Fortes. <laughs> on getting your needs met. Listen, get a therapist, get a coach, get something, but start working with someone who's and you gotta, it, it's all about putting it into practice because all of the stuff that I'm saying, I'm saying it because I practice it. Like I, I am constantly checking myself and I am constantly like, you know, check like, did I say something? Am I being this? What am I? And this is what allows me to be very free when I express myself because a lot of the things that we're hiding, like, and like, yeah. I'm, I still got mad work to do. Like, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. But like, <laughs> like I'm not, I'm, I'm not, a, I'll never be done, and I, and yeah. like that's exciting. So like, work on yourself. But and then, but here's the thing. So, so I, I love everything you're saying, and we have to understand the other extreme because someone can take what we're saying right now and then go to the other extreme and just cut people off too quickly. And I definitely yeah. think that's the other side of it. So we're talking about this dichotomy. I don't know. Is that the right word? This dichotomy yeah. Of, yeah. Um, of love addiction and love avoidance, right? right. So the love yeah, addiction right. comes from, you know, I love exactly how you said it, right? There's the checklist. And so now I'm attached to the checklist to the point where I'm going to ignore the person, like what the person is showing me. And I'm going to ignore myself because I'm so addicted to the love that I've made up in my head. And like last week we said, people are more committed to the fantasy than the reality. So that's kind of the love addiction, right? Then we can, but then we can easily swing the other way where we become love avoidant. And this is the pattern that a lot of my clients that I work with are in. Why? Because it's the pattern that I was in and it's the pattern that I learned how to break out of. And so I help people break out of this pattern, but then there's the love avoidance side where there's availability right in front of you but it's not perfect and so we shut it down we shut it down and and then we we make them lame and then we're like oh well they missed one box on the checklist 
So, but what's the commonality there? You're here chasing unavailable, and then you're here pushing away available. And so what's the common denominator? That, and, and then boom, that's right what you said, Felix, of like, it's an inner game. Dating and relationships is an inner game. And yes, once you get into a relationship, once you start dating someone, once you're actually in an interaction, absolutely that there are some outer elements to that because now there is another person outside of you that you have to learn about and you have to like so there's absolutely outer strategies if you will or outer tools for how to interact with that person that you're in a relationship with but like 90 percent of it is 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 an inner game or what do they say about football 80 yep. percent mental 20 percent physical <laughs> well so we're well here's the thing like little giants and and this is this is this is this will like some like get right into it like it would like jam itself like ultimately this is what matters your experience of yourself in a relationship therefore if someone's showing up a certain way and you're being and you're getting frustrated then there's an expectation that you're getting frustrated now what would it look like for you to come from love for you for you to come from kindness from used to come from understanding, right? No matter what happened, what would it look like? And it, and it doesn't like, I'm not saying like, this is the person you're gonna end up with, but like, you're like, listen, I understand that, you know, you may be busy or whatever, but this is how it makes me. And like, even honoring your, your own feelings. And if someone doesn't, is like, whoa, this person is like too expressive. And it's like, okay, this is just how I am. And that's perfectly fine too. So. It's all about how you get to experience yourself in a situation. So it's actually the best thing. And you want to notice when you're getting frustrated, because when you're getting frustrated, you're making it about yourself. Now you want to, that's the best thing that's happening for you in order to evolve, because that's something that is something that you need to work on. So that's your gift. The frustration is actually your gift. I don't know if that makes any sense. But it's well, something that I think what it is is the frustration. So when I think of the word frustration, I picture like you're hitting up against a wall. And yeah. so for me, that's always an indication that you're coming up against an edge. And that mm. when you come up against an edge, that almost always, if not always, is an opportunity to look at yourself. This is kind of right. what I'm hearing you say, Felix. Like right. So right. like if I'm getting frustrated, there's a value Right. underneath that frustration that that person is not matching and that's why i say values-based choosing is the antidote to deception number five because when you come from the values it makes it so much clearer you know like i remember like i said my last relationship best one i've ever had to date <laughs> until my next one um <laughs> but um like he showed me that he was a man of his word he showed me that he shows up not just on time, like, but early is on time. He showed me that if he says he's going to do something, he does it. And especially for me as a feminine woman, we need that shit because yeah. that integrity and show and like keeping your word helps us feel safe. And not even just as a feminine woman, I think just in general, people, people will are constantly choosing if they trust you or not. Right. Yeah. And if you don't show up a certain way, then you don't, then, then they're not trustworthy. And so like, for me thinking about this situation with this guy that we're talking about, right. Like to me, I would be like, Oh, like, no. However, back to the other point. So there's the love addiction on this and in the love avoidance, we don't want to go too far the other way and now just start cutting people off because they're not perfect. Right. Well, so no, yeah, that's, you gotta that's... Find, you've got to find the sweet spot between the avoidance and the, or the addiction. <laughs> The yeah, Goldilocks yeah. effect, the Goldilocks effect. <laughs> so I want to try something out. Like if, if any of y'all are watching, I want you guys to list your top five values that you that you believe that you have. I want you to list your top five values. For a lot of people, these are things that they are actually usually not with. Like they, they, they don't they don't get to like they don't get to really express their values and then actually practice them. Right. So for me, like for me is kindness, right? So I am I am very aware whenever I'm outside, when I'm in the streets, to be kind, to look where someone has a need to be met, right? So if I see someone that needs help, right? So um, for me is definitely honesty. Yeah, uh, Dr. Hi, Betty. Betty. 
Hi, Jake. Spirituality. Yep. Yep. Um, what else? Uh, for me is joy, like gratitude, um, peace. And that was yeah. a big one. For me, peace has become the a top priority. When I'm not at peace, everything else is yeah. like, it's all frazzled. So my peace makes me like, when I'm at peace, I am killing the game, right? So because <laughs> like, because my mind is at peace, I'm clear. My body is, is it's working fine. Like I don't feel pain. I don't feel yeah. dragged. So like peace for and me so is- taking that a step further, like from values to now, how do we apply that to dating and attracting love? It's like, for you, the inner game then is to cultivate that kindness, that gratitude, that joy, mm -hmm. that peace. Because when you cultivate those values within yourself, you strengthen them. And therefore, when you're out there dating, anyone who can't match that or who can't share with you in that, that's in, that, that they'll just fall away naturally. Because if you're trusting from that values piece, right? Now, of course, back to not going too far the other way with like the love avoidant, it's like, you're not going to cut someone off just because they're not joyful one day, right? Like, so we're not trying to like but, judge yeah. people necessarily. But what I'm hearing, like, if I'm thinking about the kind of woman that you would want to, that you would be attracting is like someone who ha is anchored in her peace, someone who is, um, who can be joyful or who generally is joyful, someone who um, comes from gratitude and comes from kindness. And, and those are things that are easy to spot right away. And so just even back to, absolutely, Dr. Betty, must be aligned with your partner. Just even going back to what Shamik said, like, the fact that the way that person was behaving like takes you out of your, let's just say you had the same values Felix has, right? Like mm -hmm. out of your peace, out of your joy, out of your gratitude, like that's something to look at. That's not necessarily something to be like, okay, I'm gonna cut you off, like love avoidant, but it's still something to look at and be with. So we've got some values up in here, value of time, honesty, integrity, self-reliant, caring. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of caring. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of honesty. We got a lot mm -hmm. of love, gratitude, I wonder joy. Fun. When, Sh when Shamik says value of time, does he mean quality time? I'm just asking. Just or so it could be, be what clear. I was talking about because when we were. Oh, okay. Was, like I value, I value my time. Good. Like so. Yeah. So you value my time because I value my time. Got yes. it. Okay. Because and, and see time that that's like that's a very simple um, weed simple value to weed people out because. There's, look, I've worked hard on my inner game to value my time. Like, you know, just like anyone else, we have the whole, I'll be there in five minutes and you show up 30 minutes later. Like, so I- What? I've people don't do me. that. People don't do that. No, people, people don't do, don't that. do that. Oh no, you're five right. Five minutes and then 30, I'm all. like, no, no. If, if, no, listen, if people tell me five minutes and they show up 30 minutes, I won't be there because by by the, I've given five extra minutes and then I'm gone. Like I've moved, I I did something. I don't wait on people. Yeah, I but don't wait. what I was what I was where I was I'm going sorry. with that is I've worked <laughs> I've worked hard on cultivating my sense of integrity, my sense of time. Yeah. And so if someone that I'm dating or if someone shows up who's interested doesn't match that, then it's like that just tells me where they're at. And it's like if you're not. And I hate saying like on my level because it, it implies like a better than, but I'm just gonna not say that. Not on my level. You're just not on my level. Just not on my level. <laughs> You're not here. I need you to be here. Like, yeah. Okay. So Shamik says respect of my time. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Loving. Kind. Yeah. We've got a lot of honest. We've got a lot of great. So yeah. So back to with the values piece. You know, the first step is are you embodying those values, right? right. Are so, you walking the walk, right? Yeah. Like, you can't want something you, you, you're you not putting out there. Like, like that's out of integrity. You're wanting something. Exactly. That you, I want someone who's honest, but yet you're telling like white lies. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Well, that's why know? too, I mean, the, the, the topic of this series has been, how do you attract love? So attract mm -hmm. is like attracts like, and yep. so if you're not being honest, you're, you're going to attract dishonesty, right? Um, and the example that I, I think it was when I did Deception 5 video, but one of those videos, I gave the example of, you know, one of my clients wants 
someone who adores her, someone who who showers her with, she's a words of affirmations person, right? So, but then um, when we looked at the self-talk, which was actually the self-love reading from yesterday, we talked about, was it yesterday? Yeah, we talked about, are you too hard on yourself? And how do you stop the struggle? And I talked about how you need to observe your self-talk. And so when she was observing her self-talk, she was like, holy crap, like, 90% of the time I'm saying something negative. And so I'm like, wow. So if in your own mind, you're sh you're showering yourself with negativity, yet yeah. you want a partner who's going to shower you with positivity, like that, those two don't. Well, oil well, so, so yeah, like I wanna, I had this thought, like there's this thing, like you can't, no one can love you more than you can love yourself. Well, that's not true, right? Because people can love you more than you love yourself. The problem is that you won't be able to perceive it because you will only yeah. be able to receive as much love as you are pouring into yourself, right? So you are setting the context. You are the, the, you are the space in which love is poured into. So if, you're, if you are depleted and if your space is like non-existent, it's just gonna, it's, it's not, there's nothing to go into. You're not creating a space for love to come into for you to receive. Therefore, people, people can love you more than you love yourself. You just won't be aware of it. You won't be able to receive it. You won't be able to receive it. And, and with that, oh, go wait, hold on. I, so I also have a quote. I think I had a, I had a quote. Fuck, I forgot. Yeah, I was gonna quote. say a quote. So maybe it's the one I was gonna say. And with but, that, we accept, we accept the love we believe we deserve. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't my quote, but that's. Well, that's yeah. my quote. And that's what we're gonna start to wrap up with. So, okay. hi, Diana, so many people are on. Give us a hello. If you're catching this on the replay, give us a hashtag replay. You are watching Wind Down Wednesday with Amelia and Felix every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific for the rest of our lives. Oh. We are talking about how do you attract love? And today we've been talking about commitment and priorities. And if you say you want a partner, are you committed? Are you making it a priority? We've been rocking and rolling for the last 45 minutes. If you're just joining, welcome. And it's you'll definitely like catch the beginning of the video. Yeah, I'm trying to wrap up and I can feel like you're gonna go into another point. No, I have the quote, God. I have the quote. No, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> So it's, it's, you don't, so you don't, you don't attract what you deserve, right? You attract who you are. Yeah. Right. You can deserve, you deserve it all. Actually, you deserve everything you want. The problem is that that's, that's not what you're going to get. You're going to get, you're going to attract who you are. This is why personal development. I'm, I'm, I'm so big on personal development because once you start developing yourself, you start getting the skills in order to be able to, to recognize things. And, um, and that's a superpower. It's a superpower. Well, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm gonna highlight, so the quote is, we accept the love we think we deserve. And I think think is, because mm -hmm. what we deserve is the best, right? But what we mm -hmm. think we deserve, that's that's because the word think applies to the mind, the mind applies to the subconscious, what you think. Mm. And so whatever we're thinking, whatever our subconscious is programmed to do, we're going to either be addicted to the wrong thing or avoiding the right thing. And we're just going to be all over the place. So it's, it. it's what you think you deserve and it's who you are, who you're being, how you're showing up. And exactly your quote is related to your values. And are you in integrity with your values? Are you attracting your values? We've given you a lot of amazing things to think about. If you've received value please give us some hearts give us some likes leave us some love in the comments and i just want to thank everyone who participated in the conversation we had diana jeremy dr betty castro erica shamik uh oh my gosh jake did not say anything but he was here and i see you here all the time so <laughs> Ozzy, um who else was here we had some other people in the beginning Delandis, Vanessa, Jane, Emily, everybody. Thank you. Give us the loves. Give us the likes. We're here every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific for Wind Down Wednesday, talking about love and relationships. Usually that's what we end up talking about. So let's yeah. just say that's what we talk about. Yeah. We will continue the conversation of how do you attract love next week um, in a different context because this that concept alone we can talk about forever. Trust. Um, 
And oh yeah, trust, that's a good one. Trust, trust abundant and like abundance, right? Because today a lot of scarcity stuff came up. So mm-hmm. yeah, next week, good, good idea. We're gonna talk about trust and abundance and I have how a do whole we, thing about trust. How do we shift? I know you've been wanting to talk about trust. Right? We're gonna do it finally. Felix yeah. keeps like, when we talk about trust, can we talk love about trust? trust? talk about trust so yeah next week trust and trusting in abundance um also friday i'm going live with rafael moreno at 1 Mm. p.m eastern 10 a.m pacific sorry not 1 p.m 12 15 p.m eastern 9 15 a.m pacific and we're going to talk about how to have difficult conversations he's been hosting quarantine cafe every monday through friday for the last few weeks right now and and he has been hosting difficult conversations and so we're going to be talking about that um on friday definitely in the context of relationship but also just in general well i guess difficult conversations is always in the context of that but anyway i'm going to go on another tangent so thank you so much for watching. Just keep it locked right here on the page. And um, I'll yeah. always announce when I'm going live next. Um, but definitely every Wednesday we're here. And the additional lives are as they come up. So just stay here for the announcements. Love y'all. Thank you so much, Felix. I love you too. Thank you for kikiing with me every yeah. Wednesday. And thank you everyone to all of our regulars. Y'all are the bomb. For real, Talk for real. To you later. For real, for real. <laughs> Peace. Bye.